So in the past, I've done some tutorials on blinking and flashing LEDs, but that approach relied on turning a label into an emissive material and then having it blink on and off. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to create a flashing LED, but it's gonna be physically accurate where we're actually emitting light through the lens of an LED enclosure. So without further ado, let's dive in. First thing we need to do is import our model, and you can get this model for free from my file vault. I'll link it down below. Let's take a look at the parts we have here in our model. I will turn all of them off. We have an anvil. This is what the LED gets mounted to. We have a single plane as the actual LED, and then we have a hollow lens. If we look underneath it, go into performance mode, you'll see it's basically got an empty shell or an empty center, and we have the same thing but the solid version. Now when I modeled this, I didn't know which one would work better. Turns out the solid lens works better. So we're gonna go ahead and delete the hollow lens. And as far as I understand, the solid lens is actually how these LEDs are made. So it makes sense that this version worked better. Let's turn on all those parts and I want to add a ground plane. So I'll hit Control and G on the keyboard to add a ground plane. And you won't see anything but double click on the ground and change its material to diffuse, and now we can see it. So from here, I want another plane kind of for a backdrop. So I'm going to select this, duplicate it, hold shift and rotate to snap to 90. And let's just move this back. So now we have kind of a, a wall that our light can bounce off of, something like that. Let's go add a camera. And to set this up, what I wanna do, um, I'm just gonna do control, alt, shift, right click, which is a big hotkey to center and fit everything. And then I'm just going to zoom in using my scroll wheel and middle mouse button to kind of center things. If you want a grid, you can do halves and then we can kind of center our composition a little bit. And I'll zoom in a little bit further. And we're gonna save that for now. I'll also go to a longer perspective. So maybe like 80, so it'll flatten things out a little bit. Save to update the camera. I'll turn off my grid. Now I wanna move my LED down so it's not floating in space. So let's just grab that LED. Control D to get the move tool. Just drag it down until it looks like it's sitting on the ground. Okay, now we've got our materials to set up. Before we do that, I like to change the environment as well because this neutral environment's not going to um, help us. It's a little washed out. So let's go to our environment. I'm going to use this empty sort of, uh, what is this called? Modern storehouse. I think you can get that in Keyshot. So it's got a little more high contrast with some bright lights overhead. The Keyshot Material Masterclass is the biggest, most comprehensive course dedicated to material creation in Keyshot ever. With feature-based and project-based lessons, I cover a wide range of topics like PBR workflow, texture gamma and bit depth, UV unwrapping, and how to master the material graph. I'll guide you through creating a modern bathroom scene complete with dynamic lighting and material imperfections down to the dust particles and fingerprints. With 166 lessons, this is my most epic masterclass course yet. I can't wait to see what you make after taking the course. Link in the description below. Next, let's actually set up our material for this uh, LED housing. I'm gonna use just a cloudy plastic, I believe. So let's go try that. And now we can see through, that's, that's looking good. I want to change the color to something a little more familiar. So I'll use this kind of a light green, almost yellowish color. And what I wanna do is change that transparency distance. This controls how much of this color we get in here. So as we reduce it, it's gonna get darker and darker. And I'm actually gonna go all the way down to one because this is a very small LED and I want that cloudiness in there. So this is looking pretty good and it took that kind of light green color and it darkened it up quite a bit. Now I think I'll leave the rest of these the same. Maybe I'll take the refractive index up just a little more, maybe 1.5. And under advanced, I'm gonna make sure I have more samples. So maybe 20 or even 24. That's gonna help this material smooth out a little bit. So the next thing we wanna do is work on that LED chip. So we're going to go and turn off our solid lens. And what I wanna do is double click on top. This is the LED chip and we're gonna change its material and I will set it to area light. So now we should be emitting light up in one direction and we're gonna turn off this apply to back of geometry because if we hide the anvil, you can see the lights coming out in both directions. And if we go back and turn off apply to back of geometry, it won't shine down. So we'll go ahead and turn that anvil back on and what I wanna do is turn on the solid lens and see what this is looking like. So right now we have a lot of light coming out of here, which tells me our LED is too bright, most likely. Let's go ahead and reset our camera. And you'll notice that there's not any light bouncing 
out in the rest of the scene. So let's go to our lighting tab and go into product mode. This is going to allow light to escape and illuminate other surfaces thanks to um, global illumination. And we're also gonna want caustics on, which is going to slow things down even further, unfortunately. But caustics are really going to allow the light that gets refracted through this lens to spill out onto these other surfaces. Now this is quite noisy, absolutely. Uh, we're going to do a couple things to address that. Let's start off with the brightness of the LED. Most often when you're getting a lot of noise from physical lights and key shot, it's because your light is simply too bright. Uh, so I'm gonna go into that LED and instead of a thousand lumen, I'm gonna go all the way down to 25 lumen. So that's looking pretty good. What I'm looking for here is some sort of kind of gradient or fall off where it's bright white in the middle and it fades out to green. Maybe you could go even a little darker than this, just kind of depends on your preference here. But this is looking pretty good overall. The other thing I wanna do is go to my image tab and give this denoise uh, a shot. Before I do that, I might go into um, photographic mode and you'll notice by going from basic to photographic this really bright area that was too bright made it look overexposed and this kind of lime green effect we stamp that down with photographic and anytime you're dealing with physical lights or really bright reflections whether that's on um, like a metal or a glass like this going into photographic mode is almost always going to be a necessity you have to do that to make it look more realistic so you can see it really just tones that down a lot looks a little more realistic. The next thing I wanna do is you can play with high contrast and low contrast, just a bit of a personal preference there. Um, I think I might go with the high contrast for now and then just bring up the exposure up a little bit. Next, what we wanna do is go into denoise. Denoise is going to allow you to get rid of all that, those white dots that you saw. Now, this is too strong. This is set to one. I'm gonna go down to about 0.5. And the reason we don't want it too high is because when we go too high, it smudges everything and it looks really fake. And when you do an animation, especially with denoise, it can lead to a lot of unwanted sort of um, smudginess. I don't know how else to describe it. So we're gonna go to 0.5 for the denoise. And for these other white specs, we can use the Firefly filter. So I'm gonna take this down to up to 0.5 as well. And that's gonna target those little hot white pixels around um, our LED. Now, next you're gonna to want to turn on bloom. This is gonna allow us to get that glow effect that you're used to seeing. So let's take the bloom all the way up to one to begin with, and then take the radius up to something big like 20, maybe even 50. So now you see it's glowing. What we wanna do is take that threshold up because it's glowing too much and on every surface. By increasing this threshold, we only limit the glow to the brightest areas. So here's what I'm going to try. I think somewhere around uh, 1.5 maybe for the threshold. And then I think a bloom intensity of somewhere around maybe 0.5 or 0.4. And then we could take this up to like 60, whatever we wanna do for that glow. That still is a little bit much for me. So I'm gonna take the actual bloom intensity down to maybe 0.1. So that's looking pretty good if you ask me. Next, we need to address the actual effect of this blinking. And before I do that, I do want to address one more thing. This denoise is helping a lot, but it's still pretty grainy. Now, I am on CPU mode right now, and I'm only using uh, 16 cores on my CPU. So if you have a pretty fast CPU, this might work, but it's still quite noisy. I do recommend, if you can, switching to GPU mode. GPU mode tends to make uh, take better advantage of the denoising inside of Keyshot. And if you have a fast GPU, then you're going to be able to render out something like this a lot more easily. If you're on a older CPU, there's not a lot of ways around it. This is something that's gonna create quite a bit of noise, unfortunately. Now, you'll notice things look a little different as well. I'm going to increase the actual intensity of the bloom. Sometimes these settings need to be adjusted when going from CPU to GPU mode, just because they are different algorithms. Okay, let's cut to the point that you're probably here for, which is how do we animate this and get it to blink? Let's go into the actual material properties of our LED chip. Material graph. And from here, what we're gonna do is actually animate this material. This little node here represents the actual material of our light, our LED. We wanna right click and go down to animation and curve fade. All we need to do is plug this into our power socket on our area light, and you'll notice it turns off, it goes black. Let's go into the curve fade node, double click it, go into animation. And what we wanna do is create a little wave and 
right now it's at zero. When we click on this first dot that our timeline is on, our value set to zero. And we're ending at a value of one. Let's actually end at a value of zero, which sounds a little weird, but I'll show you why. And then we're gonna go in the middle and create a new stop. So we're gonna right click and add key, select that dot and take this value all the way up to the brightest our LED is gonna get, which is 25 lumen, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll type in 25 and we're gonna click this little button to zoom to fit. So now we have this sort of mountain looking thing with the green line. We also wanna make sure our timing is correct. So time, I'm gonna do 500 milliseconds, which is half of a second. And you'll notice our animation starts at zero seconds and it ends at one seconds. And what we wanna do is take these little box handles, hold shift and drag to the right. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating this sort of um, curve that's going to allow the light to fade in and fade out in a nice gentle effect. So now if I actually were to play this, um, actually what we can do is just drag our, our play uh, head along this timeline and we'll see it glows. It turns from a brightness of zero back up to 25 and then back down to zero. So if we look in the animation timeline, we can open that up by either pressing A or clicking on this animation button down here we have created this material animation. And if I just hit play, it will repeat all the way through. Now, if you need this to blink multiple times within an animation, you're actually gonna to have to create more um, keyframes for this material. So there are a number of ways you can do that, but pretty much it's going to, so to create more keyframes, if you want this to blink on and off multiple times, unfortunately, it's a bit of a manual process. So for example, if we wanted to have this blink twice, I'm going to go ahead and take this last keyframe and set it from one to two. And we're going to have it uh, go to, we're gonna add another keyframe and we're gonna set this one to one. Um, so we'll take the time and actually set zero milliseconds, one second, and we'll set the value to zero. And then we're gonna go up and add another keyframe and set this one to 1.5 seconds and a value of 25. Once again, we'll click this zoom to fit and we need to kind of hold shift and manually create these handles so we can create this uh, fade in, fade out effect. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, if I hit play on the timeline, we blink in and out twice um, and then it just repeats. So. Now, if you wanted to save this to your material library to reuse, you didn't have to make this every time. Here's what I recommend. Um, I've got a custom folder for materials right here. What I would do is I would name this material. I would call this uh, blinking LED to X, which tells me it blinks twice. And then I would just save this to my custom library. And this is a material you could just drag onto something else and run with it. So you could spend maybe five, 10 minutes creating uh, blinking LED 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, etc. So you have a whole library of blinking LEDs. And then if you need it to speed up or slow down, you can just drag it on the timeline. So now it's playing twice as fast. It's blinking a lot faster. And I could conversely slow it down much further. So it is a much more of a slow, gentle blink. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on is if you're gonna render this out, it will take a lot of time. There's no way around it. When I rendered this out for the preview you saw in the beginning of this video, I used a GPU render mode, and I believe I set my settings to 20,000 samples. Yes, that is a lot of samples. Um, you can probably get away with fewer samples if you go with higher values on your denoising, uh, but you know, if you want a perfectly smooth with no noise render, uh, I think I had to do something up in that range. And what I did is I actually only rendered it blinking once. And then I took those frames into another program, DaVinci Resolve, and I just repeated them three or four times. So instead of rendering the full sequence, I just rendered it blinking on and off once. And then I, in post-production, had those repeat a few times. That saved me quite a bit on actual render time.